From the time I entered college, I was presented with a statement from all my professors. I was told in no uncertain terms that in any paper I write, I could not challenge evolution because it was fact. I was told that if I was to challenge it in any paper, I would receive an incomplete on the assignment. Being at best an agnostic at the time, I simply accepted this as truth. This is a professor, and in many cases a PhD, and who am I to challenge them? So how does this idea that evolution is universally accepted as fact by all PhDs and professors around the world hold up? I will link this and all articles I discuss in this video in the information section. This is the website Descent from Darwin. It is belief in intelligent design and is signed by professors and PhDs from around the entire world, Ivy League schools among them. Why are these PhDs and professors not allowed to be heard from? Why is our media silent on them? Ben Stein, who is a lawyer and was a professor of law at Pepperdine University Law School, said, and I quote, I am sorry to say, freedom of inquiry in science is being suppressed. Under a new anti-religious dogmatism, scientists and educators are not allowed to even think thoughts that involve an intelligent creator. They cannot even mention the possibility that as Newton or Galileo believed, these laws were created by God or a higher being. They could get fired, lose tenure, have their grants cut off. This can happen. It has happened. Now the fact that fear is keeping these professors and PhDs from speaking out in defense of intelligent design, and if they stray from the dogma of evolution, their money is cut off, should make you think. First off, why does money and those who control it determine what we should and can view as fact? The fact that hundreds upon hundreds of these professors and PhDs have only one outlet, the internet, where they can challenge the theory of evolution should speak volumes. So what exactly are these professors and PhDs challenging in the theory of evolution? There is such a thing as mathematical impossibility and the fact that DNA contains an amount of information that is mind-boggling. These are all things you can research for yourself, but I think it is more important to actually show you video of DNA transcription and let you decide for yourself if this is a system that was intelligently designed or is this something that could have come from rocks. Why rocks? Let's look at evolution as a theory in its simplest sense. I am not going to even get into ideas like the Big Bang, which claims that matter that came from nowhere exploded and created everything. Or go into the fact that the Big Bang is directly from the Zohar, which is Kabbalah. We are going to give science this, and just challenge what happened on Earth. There was a rock that was the Earth. How did water get there? It is believed maybe a stray comet filled with ice crashed into it and somehow arranged itself into an atmosphere, started the water cycle, etc. Eventually these rocks and water formed DNA and proteins. Now it is time to watch actual video of DNA transcription. I want you to decide for yourself, is this intelligent design and systems within systems or is this something that could have happened randomly? innermost workings of how a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. This is what Francis Crick called the central dogma of modern biology. How DNA makes protein. It starts with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene. It's these that trigger the first phase of the process reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. The gene is the length of DNA stretching away to the left. Everything's ready to roll. Three, two, one. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. 
The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to make an exact copy of the A's, C's, G's, and T's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related nucleic acid known as U. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes away from the nucleus and into the outer part of the cell. Then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of another molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory called a ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. They all carry a specific three-letter code that will be read by the machine. Now we come to the heart of the process. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code for each amino acid is read off, three letters at a time, and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecule. When the right transfer molecule plugs in, the amino acid it carries is added to the growing protein chain. Again, you are watching this in real time. And after a few seconds, the assembled protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. Interesting video, isn't it? Why isn't this shown on television? This is what is going on in your bone marrow a hundred trillion times a second. Does this look like a system to you? Does this look like intelligent design? Now let's continue with evolution and what it further asks us to believe. After this amazing system and biological factories, spontaneously came into being, something had to happen for life to evolve. What? A genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information found in the genome. Richard Dawkins, who belittles anyone that questions evolution, was asked to explain where this has ever happened. Many believe he was stumped, and people use this to question his intellect. This question does have an answer though, and Richard Dawkins knew the answer. Why didn't he give it? Because it makes the theory of evolution even more unbelievable. There is one observable case where an increase in information is found in the genome. It is called Down syndrome. Down syndrome itself is due to an error in cell division. So this is what the theory of evolution proposes in truth. Rocks mixed with water formed complex biological factories. Eventually, these simple forms of life had Down syndrome offspring due to an error in cell division, which somehow resulted in more advanced life. Eventually, these simple life forms through millions of years of errors in cell division formed the male and the female, and eventually through millions and millions of years of error, the most intelligent form of life to ever walk the earth came to be. Does this sound logical to you? I have a simple question for Richard Dawkins. 
What came first in evolution, the sea urchin or the sea otter? This is simple to answer. The sea urchin is one of the first animals claimed to have evolved some 400 to 500 million years ago, and it is claimed that this animal has remained relatively the same throughout all of history. How about the sea otter? No one knows exactly how sea otters evolved, but it is believed that they rose from a primitive fish-eating otter mammal about 5 to 7 million years ago, and are a general newcomer in the evolutionary timeline. Now why am I talking about sea otters and urchins? This is the kelp forest. When sea otters were hunted and endangered, the entire kelp forest ecosystem failed. The sea urchin destroyed the kelp forest because it was left unchecked. They left the kelp forest a graveyard. When the sea otter returned to the habitat through conservation, the kelp forest instantly rebounded. The sea urchin is a tough animal to prey upon, but the sea otter has it figured out. The sea otter wraps himself in kelp at the surface and lays on his back. On his stomach, it uses a rock as a tool to open its favorite prey. The sea otter loves sea urchins. The rock is extremely important to him. And most of the time, the sea otter uses the same rock their whole life. The otter never loses track of it. It's their rock and their special tool which allows them to prey upon the sea urchin. So let's see. We have an animal that supposedly evolved 5 million years ago that is necessary to control an entire ecosystem from an animal that evolved 500 mil million years ago. Without the sea otter, the sea urchin population would grow unchecked, eventually run out of food, and die off. Does this make any sense to you whatsoever? This is amazing! This shows that within each and every little cell in our body, there is a system going on. There is a system going on to reproduce what we wear off. We are taking in and we are throwing out every day. That is the cyclus. And this earth, it is growing up and then it's dying and growing up and it's dying. That's the cyclus of it. And the universe is around us. The universe around us is also systematic. There is a system outside. There is a system on this earth. We we are an intelligent system and inside of us there are intelligent little factories inside our cells to keep us going. All this is systems within systems within systems and there is a creator to all these systems and this creator he wants you, he wants you to listen to what he has to say because there is a virus within his perfect system. And that virus speaks like this. I find it extremely hard to imagine how any creationist who actually bothered to listen to that could possibly doubt the fact of evolution. But they don't listen. I mean, this, 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 your, your question is a, is a perfectly good question, but it's not, it's not really relevant because what they do is simply stick their fingers in their ear and say la la la. Richard Dawkins, evolution is not a fact, it is a fairy tale. It is what you tell your students to believe in, and you, you ridicule guys like me, and other people that believe in the creation, in the creator of this universe. Now, Richard Dawkins, let me remind you that you are just a guest here on this planet and your days are numbered. Your and all your believers will be defeated when the programmer, the intelligent programmer, runs his antivirus and take away everything that is not intelligent in his eyes. Stick their fingers in their ear and say la la la. No, 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 Richard Dawkins, we do not stick our fingers in our ear and refuse to listen to you. We have been listening to you. This theory of evolution we have been forced to listen to throughout our education in public and private schools. We even had tests on the subject so that they could check if we had understood. I understood the theory of evolution, but I could never believe in it. It was too dumb for that. 